Hello, my name is Buddy Zarbach, and I'm going to be your host today on understanding financial statements. Uh, I own a company called Commercial Funding Partners, one of the founders, and uh, I sit on the committee uh, for education um, with the AACFB, and we'd like to welcome you to our webinar today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, just, this, it's not going to take very long, but hopefully it will be uh, something that will help you. We're going to have an intro to the financial statements, and we're going to go over some common concerns. We're going to go over cash flow and uh, debt service coverage and how we actually read the ratios on uh, financial statements. And uh, the pros of you understanding how to do this will uh, up your game, so to speak, and assisting you in having uh, customers that you can, as a broker, go back to time and a time, time and time again. Um, we have brokers in our, in our program that have eight or nine or ten schedules with a certain with a, with a single customer and their larger schedules and it will enable you to make uh, significantly uh, more money and uh, an, an income stream that uh, renews itself. So uh, it's key to locating uh, attractive deals and usually these deals pay one to five points and they they provide provide a snapshot of the company that you're currently working on and what I see in the industry and the number one commandment that is violated by a lot of our brokers is they they believe the story and the the, the customer is a is a good guy or a good gal but um, it's just a bad deal because it doesn't have the financials to back it up. So, okay, so let's talk about the common concerns. Uh, most all financial statements are prepared uh, as per GAAP, and which is GAAP is generally accepted accounting principles, and that is the way we do accounting here in the United States. There are other uh, ways that accounting is done in other countries, but uh, G GAP is how they do it in the United States. There's three different styles of financials. There's there's the balance sheet, there's the income statement, and and the uh, cash flow statement. Those are the three different um, components of a financial statement. Um, not all companies have a cash flow statement, but all companies have a P and L and a balance sheet. Uh, there's four styles of financial statements. One is the internally generated, and that is uh, just prepared by the book bookkeeper, and uh, there's a lot of different kinds of programs that do financial statements. The next one is called compiled, and that is uh, prepared by an accountant who checks the internal statements, um, but usually you need tax returns to verify the accuracy with compiled statements. You also need tax, return, tax returns to verify the accuracy of internal statements also, um, just to make sure that the uh, statements are accurate. Uh, there's reviewed. It's a more in-depth preparation, uh, and there is a significantly more cost to a company to have reviewed statements. And then there is the most expensive one, which is called audited um, statements. Uh, they are the most accurate, and they cost anywhere between twenty dollars and $100,000 to prepare. Um, but you do not require tax documentation to corroborate the statements. Sometimes in reviewed statements, you don't need tax docs to uh, corroborate. Um, it's kind of a, you know, the, these lines are kind of blurry, so you never really, I can't give you something that's hard and fast, but I'm, I'm going to tell you this, that if they have an audit, then we don't need tax returns. So here is a balance sheet. Uh, typical, uh, what a balance sheet is, is uh, it's prepared at the end of the year, typically. Um, or quarterly. 
and it's a snapshot that uh, illustrates the net worth of the business and um, the assets and liabilities of the business. So a net worth is the assets minus the liabilities. So in this, uh, if you look at this uh, balance sheet, the assets, the current assets are 120 uh, and the total assets are 300. And if you look at the liabilities, the liabilities are 200, so the shareholder's equity is 100. That's, this is just a pro forma piece, okay. Liabilities, now what we really care about, and when I look at current portion of long-term debt, and that's, that's really the key uh, component that I look at as I, as I care about uh, their financial statement. I need to know their current portion of long-term debt. What their current portion of long-term debt is, which is five in this um, scenario, is all of their monthly payments, their long-term monthly payments, uh, times 12, so within the year. So um, equity is all is what we talked about, is what the value of the owners have put into the business is called net worth. All right, and this is an income statement. Uh, an income statement uh, shows the revenue generated during a certain time period. Uh, cyclical, um, the revenues is, is what uh, the company made from all the various sources of income. There's uh, gross revenues. The expenses is all the money that the company has spent during the time period. Okay, now let's talk about cash flow. It's a cash flow statement. Uh, it changes, uh, it, just, it just talks about how much cash the company has. It's cyclical. Uh, the cash flow from operations is during the normal business operations. Um, they buy and sell assets. Um, they take out and pay down loans, uh, buying, selling stocks and bonds. That's basically is the cash flow position um, from prior year to this year. That's what a cash flow statement is. Okay. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the concerns, but we're also going to talk a little bit more about the ratios that we're going to be uh, looking at a little bit later on in this presentation. Uh, first, this is a concern. The customer won't disclose uh, their financial statements. They're too sensitive for you to look at, and, and uh, they don't want to give them to you. Well, if you can't get them, you have no deal. Okay, so that's a concern about financial statements. Let's say you get financial statements and the customer has no profit and cannot obtain competitive pricing from their bank. Well, the, what you need to look at, because we do a lot of uh, business with co companies that have no net profit. You look at the depreciation and amortization to see if they, uh, and those are non-cash expenditures um, that a company uses to uh, depreciate their equipment. And if their depreciate number is a little bit bigger and their amortization number is a little bit bigger than the loss, then we probably have a deal. Okay, here's another concern. If the company, if you look at the cash flow statement and the company has negative equity, okay. Uh, is that a problem? Uh, well, yeah, so usually a reason why uh, they can't, uh, get financing from their bank, but it can be counterbalanced with a small, with a, excuse me, with a strong personal financial statement. And usually, um, it's you, you have negative net worth with startups, and then you also have negative net worth with companies that have been in business for many, many years, for 20, 30 years. What they've done is they've depreciated all of their equipment out, and they have negative equity. Um, do all transactions require guarantors? The answer to that is, uh, if the tangible net worth of the company is greater than five million, then personal guarantee is not always required. So that's something that uh, you may want to take a look at too. So you look at the tangible net worth. I, I said tangible net worth as opposed to net worth of the company. Sometimes there is something called goodwill. Uh, that is listed in the asset section, and there's also something that is called intangibles. Literally, it is called intangibles. 
and those are minused out. So, uh, you, and so what tangible net worth of a company is, is their net worth minus out intangibles and goodwill. All right. All right. So let's move to the next slide. All right. So let's talk about ratios. And uh, we are, we just talked about the tangible net worth. So the tangible net worth of a company is the total of the owner's equity minus goodwill and intangibles. Um, we look at tangible net worth and most companies look at tangible net worth. They don't look at goodwill and intangibles. Okay, so I mentioned it before, a negative or a weak tangible net worth can be offset by good guarantors. Current ratios, let's talk about that. So we looked uh, at uh, our uh, balance sheet. There's current assets and current liabilities. Now, a current asset is anything that can be liquidated in one year. A current liability is anything that needs to be paid in one year. So a current ratio is the current assets over the current liabilities. And we take a look at that and we say, okay, what is, uh, anyway, so we, we talked about that. That's, that's what that slide says. All right, quick ratio. We'll talk about that. Measure whether a company can pay off its short-term liabilities using, using its current assets. So this is very simple, very similar to the current uh, ratio. It's the current assets minus inventories uh, looking at uh, over current liabilities. So that's basically a current asset is cash and something that's not, you know, inventory you can't liquidate easily. You liquidate it usually within the year. So that's called a quick ratio. They had to, if the company had to liquidate quickly. It's also called the test ratio. It's, and it's, uh, it's a better, more reliable tool, uh, but we, uh, we look at both of these. We look at the quick ratio and we look at the current ratio. All right, so a liquid ratio is what we like to have is one to one, uh, which, which is good. Uh, the current ratio, we we would just we just like to see it positive. If it can be, when I say above one, when I say positive, I mean above one. All right. Now we're going to talk about debt service coverage. Uh, that's the key ratio that that uh, most of me and my competitors look at. It's a measure of the cash flow and the and the ability to pay their current debt obligations. Rule of thumb for A and B credits is 1.25. Okay, uh, we we've done deals with uh, uh, current with this community a debt service coverage uh, that is below 1.25, but typically what we'd like to see is 1.25. Okay. This is the debt service coverage ratio. It's the net income. So if you look at the net income of the company plus the depreciation, depreciation and amortization. Uh, so it's net income, and we talked about depreciation and amortization, the non-cash expenditures, over their debt service. And their debt service is their interest and lease payments over their current portion of long-term debt. You remember I talked about uh, you know, on the balance sheet, the current portion of long-term debt was five and the debt service coverage is you look at their interest and their lease payments. And we usually like to have that be 1.25 to one. So, all right. All right. So let's talk about ways, creative ways that we use financial statements to make our deals work. Cause uh, what we want to do is we want to find a way to make our transactions work. Not all financials are are perfect. Uh, there's always a concern if we're looking at the deal. That means their bank has usually rejected them. So we are looking at a deal for a reason, and it's usually a flaw in their financial statements. Okay. So a leverage ratio. This is another thing that we're looking at. It's, it's called. Uh, so let's. It'll talk about their net worth and how much is made up as, of long-term debt. So their long-term debt and their net worth is over the total, it's called the debt to equity or their leverage ratio. This leverage ratio is important. 
um, trucking companies and uh, uh, transportation companies that are equipment intensive usually have high leverage ratios. Uh, accounting firms and these kind of things usually have very, very low leverage ratios. Um, and so we look at the industry that they're levered in and uh, we like to see obviously a low leverage ratio, but um, that's what they're, if you have, if you're levered up, you have a, a more difficult time getting more uh, money for your company. All right. So financial uh, statement al analysis leads to the most attractive deals. If you analyze the financials of a company and you do the ratio analogies, it will assist you in locating your best uh, deals. Um, those three or four different items that you take a look at, uh, their debt service coverage, their current ratio, their their leverage, uh, their current ratio, all those kinds of things kind of help you understand the how to read a financial statement and it will help you uh, talk intelligently with your customer uh, about uh, about their company and it will allow you, give you a little more credibility. Uh, that will help you uh, find a company and not work on bad deals. So if you have any questions for me, please email me at bzarbuck at com-funding.com. Uh, and I'd be happy to help you and assist you in any way possible. I uh, appreciate you working with me on this webinar, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you.